on uh, for how great is his goodness. How great is his goodness. Uh, Zechariah chapter 9, we're going to look at verses 12 through 17. And so stand if you would, and uh, we will start at verse number 12, read down through verse number 17. It says, Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, and raised up the sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrows shall go forth as the lightning. Uh, and the Lord shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with the sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as the, the, through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. And the Lord their God shall save them in that day as the flock of his people, for they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his, on his land. For how great is his goodness, and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful, and new wine the maids. Our, for our text is in verse 17, for how great is his goodness. Now let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we come to you today. And Lord, I ask that you would take and touch our hearts as we look into your word. Lord, I pray that you would fill us with your power. I pray you would open up our eyes. Help us to see wondrous things out of your law today. Uh, Lord, we live in a, a world that does not know you. Uh, Lord, the truth is there's a lot of people that claim your name, that claim Christian. And Lord, they don't know you very well. Lord, if we who are your people do not know you well, then Lord, what do we expect from a world that does not know you at all? Lord, I pray that you would touch our hearts in the preaching of your word. I pray that as, as uh, we are here in this place, that there will be others that would be listening by other means. And Lord, that you would stir their heart. Lord, I pray for those that are unsaved, that today, Lord, they would see their need of you as a savior. Lord, I pray for those that are saved, but away from you. Lord, I pray that today they would see that path back to a right relationship with you. And Lord, I pray you be with those that are walking with you, that you would encourage them, that you would lift them up, that, Lord, you would raise up a people, Lord, send a revival to a fellowship after church. Now, Lord, bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. You know, I believe the Lord desires for man to see and experience the goodness of God. For it is in that goodness, or for in that goodness, is found the true praises of God. Uh, we read these verses last week, Psalms 107, verse number 8. It says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. In verse 15 of that same chapter, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. In verse 21 of that chapter, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. In verse 31 of that chapter, it says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Now, the only problem is that for, most, uh, for the most part, man does not understand the goodness of God. You know, I, I'm amazed, and I can't say really amazed, but it, it, it is amazing how many people judge the goodness of God. I mean, you talk to them. I remember talking to a lady one time, and she said, you know, uh, said, I'm mad at God because uh, he, allowed the state of, uh, uh, he allowed the state of Michigan to take my children away from me. And in her mind, uh, God was not good because God did not stop the state of Michigan from taking her children. I've met with others that, that do not believe in God because somebody did something bad to them. Uh, I met others that are angry at God because God did something they did not like. But, you know, as I consider the five verses that we just read, uh, you know, we, we look at it and it says, if men, uh, it says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Now, one of the things that stands out in that phrase is, oh, that men or men would praise the Lord, would you know what that denotes? That denotes that man does not. Oh, that man would. Well, what it means is they're not. 
It denotes our tendency not to praise the Lord. You know, it's, it's sometimes really easy to just forget God. Sometimes it's really easy to forget that, uh, that God is good. Uh, I mean, sometimes we get to looking at our circumstances and all the things that are happening to us, and, and, and we start sort of uh, maybe not voicing it, but how many times do we mentally complain to the Lord? Lord, why is this happening to me? But would, uh, would denotes that man does not. And so again, it says, oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness. Now, you know, what happens here is this. Man makes a judgment call. God is good, uh, but that's talking about the essence of God, but also that he does good. We look at it and say, well, God is good if he does this. God is good if he does what I think he needs to have done. I mean, isn't it amazing how that we judge God based on our perception? It says, oh, men, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. God included in this phrase his wonderful works. Now, the problem is the works that are done must be attributed to God, but most of the time they're not. Right. The Bible says in Psalms 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his works or for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. You know, all we have to do is look around us and we'll see a reason to praise the Lord. Amen. You know, we'll see his goodness. I mean, look at how he made things. I mean, after he finished creation, he looked and he said it was very good. But you know what man did with that fact? They created evolution. And so what you do is when you take away the wonderful works of God, then you don't find a reason to praise him. Right. And, and so many times that's what man does. And then let me say, many times what man does is, is they've got a fickle mind. What they do is one moment they're praising the Lord, the next moment they're complaining to the Lord. Mm -hmm. In Exodus 16, the children of Israel were complaining because uh, they were brought into the wilderness and there was nothing to eat. They looked at it and they said, you know, why did the Lord bring us into the wilderness? We would have been better off to have died in Egypt than to die here in the wilderness. Now, that's after being, in the, uh, being away from Egypt for only two months and 15 days. Yeah. And they had a long ways to go. But they looked at it, and they, it's two months and 15 days later, and they said, you know what, that we've been brought into the wilderness, and we're not, we're going to stop, we're going to starve in here. You know, they, they had forgotten the plagues. They had forgotten how God proved himself. They forgot about the Red Sea. They forgot, you know, they, they ignored the pillar of cloud and the pillar of, of fire. Uh, all that God did to show them that he is on the throne. And then God turns around in, in uh, Exodus 16 and provides manna and provides quail. He said, at night you're going to have flesh to eat. In the morning you're going to get up and there's going to be some on the ground. You can make your bread. So you know what? They had sandwiches every day. <laughs> bread and meat every day. And so, you know, God, and they were excited about it. They looked at the manna and said, what is that? Well, that's what manna means. What is it? But then you come to Numbers 21 and verse 5, it says, And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? Now, wait a minute. You complained about that earlier. Mm -hmm. Why did you bring us out here? We're going to die. We don't have anything to eat. And they said, For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. Now, isn't that exactly how man is? Mm -hmm. On one hand, God proves himself to us, answers our prayer, gives us what we need. And then over here, when things get a little rough, we start complaining to God and say, Lord, why aren't you meeting my needs? Now, wait a minute. He already has. Right. Now, in Psalms 107, the chapter that deals with the goodness of God, the good acts of God, the righteousness of God, and the loving care of God. Now, what we're considering in these messages is not just the actions of God, but his character. Right. Um, the Bible says that God is love. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times people will say, well, if God is a God of love, then why did he allow this? Right. 
And so what we do is we allow the this to dictate whether he's a God of love. When in other words, what we ought to do is we ought to allow the God of love to dictate how we look at the this. Amen. We know that God is love. Yeah. And because of that, this falls under the category of the love of God. We know that God is good. Right. Therefore, everything and anything that happens in my life falls under the category of the goodness yeah. of God. God does not change based on our circumstances. Right. Right. But our circumstances change when we base them or found them upon the character of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 10 verse 17, For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. Now, I like the way that ends. He does not regard persons, nor does he take a reward. Now, one of the things that means is this. God doesn't have it in for you. You know, he does not regard persons. He doesn't look down here and say, you know what? I like Kathy better than I like Nellie. And so I'm going to treat her nice and I'm going to treat Nellie bad. And he doesn't look at it and say, you know what? I, I like Brother Ira better than Brother David. Amen. And he doesn't look at it and say, I like Tim better than Brother Boast. Well, maybe, maybe. No, no, no. <laughs> no, he doesn't do that. He does not regard man. God's goodness is consistent because God is consistent. God is good. Psalms 13, 31, verse 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men, before the sons of men. Listen, God judges, or a man judges the goodness of God by man's idea of goodness. When in return, we should be judging the goodness of God based on God. He's more than what we realize. And so we looked at last week, and I'll just mention these points last week, the declaration of God's goodness. God declares his goodness to us. Let me get this here. God declares his goodness to us. In Psalms 33, verse 5, he loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of of the Lord. The first thing we see is the Lord fills the earth full of his goodness. God has created an earth as a canvas on which to paint, not the goodness and greatness of man, but the goodness and greatness of God. We can build some nice things, but not compared to what God does. You know, we, we build something big and we get really proud of it. And we look at it and we say, you know, is this not great Babylon which I have built? And the Lord just turns around and, and, and shows us something even greater. But see, we see that the Lord fills the earth full of the goodness of God. God crowns your year with goodness. Psalm 65, verse 11, Thou crownest the year with thy goodness, and thy paths drop fatness. You know, every year God fills his goodness from the little pleasures in life to sometimes a dump truck load of blessings. Uh, he he uh, gives us a, uh, just another year. But I understand, God has already blessed you this year with goodness. He fills our year with goodness. The goodness of God is the content of our songs and our hymns of praise uh, to him. The Bible says in Psalms 107, verse 8, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. I mean, you look at our hymns. We sing about the goodness of God. The hymns, the songwriters, the, from, from all the way back to David and before. What did they do? They, the Lord cross, allows them to cross the Red Sea. And what did they do? They turned it into a song. Mm -hmm. Deborah and Barak had victory uh, over Sisera. And what did they do? They turned it into a song. And we look at it, and David, I mean, what they do, they, they, they wrote a lot of songs about David, but understand, that, that's what God does. God's given us the ability to sing, and our history and our hymn books are full of praises to him. Amen. When Moses sought to see God, God granted that he should see his goodness. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. You want to see God? Look at his goodness. People say, well, you know, I want God to prove himself. I talked to somebody the other day, and he said, you know, it'd be a whole lot better if, if you know, we saw some of the miracles. Well, understand, if you're not going to trust the Word of God, you're not going to trust a miracle. I mean, God said that. 
But, you know, if we would just see the goodness of God, uh, Moses sought to see God. God presented to him his goodness. When God proclaimed his own description to Moses, he characterized his goodness. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and in truth. And let me say, God gives us a life lived in the land filled with his goodness. Amen. Jeremiah 2, verse 7, And I brought you into a plentiful country to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. You know, if you'll just get in God's will, uh, God's going to lead you into a life of goodness, even if it's a life of pain. The goodness of God. And so we looked at the declaration of God's goodness found in the word of God. And then we have the desires of the goodness of God, of the God of goodness. Uh, you know, God has prepared all his goodness for his servants. Second Samuel 7 verse 28. O Lord, thou art that God and thy words are true. And thou hast promised this goodness unto thy servant. You know, have you ever noticed that you will never find one whose heart truly sees and appreciates the goodness of God among those who do not know and walk with God? Right. You know, if you're not walking with God, you're not going to perceive the goodness of God. Right. Uh, God's goodness is our constant traveling companion through life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Understand, no matter where I go, the goodness of God will follow me. That means it's there. Uh, the, the Lord's goodness only intensifies as we learn to trust him more. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee. You know, the closer you get to the Lord, the more you see his goodness. The closer we get to him, the better he seems. And then we saw this last week. The Lord makes his goodness available to those who are poor. Uh, it says in Psalm 68, verse 10, Thy congregation have dealt therein. Thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. You know, sometimes the only way we're going to find good is through him. Amen. We're not going to find it through ourselves. And then the goodness of God is just a part of all that God is. It says in Psalms 144, verse 1, Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield, he in whom I trust. I like what he says, he's my goodness. Right. You, know, you want to know where my goodness is? It's in the Lord. Mm -hmm. It's in him. And then God is to us according to what we are to him. It says in Romans 11 verse 22, Behold therefore the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. If you walk with the Lord, you'll see the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. But if you're up and down, up and down, up and down, you're not going to see it very well. Right. And then we saw this, that God desires for you to experience his goodness in a relationship with him. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusteth in him. And so what we want to do today, that we looked at last week, but what we want to do today is let's look at the demonstration of God's goodness. I mean, say, okay, God is good, but, but prove it to me. Mm -hmm. how, you know, how does God demonstrate his goodness to us? Now, let me just uh, quote a verse here, Romans chapter 5, verse number 8, but God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right. You want to see how, you want to see God's love? Look at Jesus hanging on the cross mm -hmm. for you. But the demonstration of God's goodness. So let me give you some. Number one, uh, the forgiveness of God is founded on the goodness of God. The forgiveness of God is founded on the goodness of God. Psalms 25 verse 7, Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. You know, when we truly see our sin as sin, and we as, an un, as unworthy sinners, then we cannot help or cannot, we can begin to understand the depth of the goodness of God. One of the problems we have today is we see ourselves as being too good. Right. Uh, you know, we sort of look at it and, and we think, you know what, I deserve the goodness of God. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that bad. I mean, I got a few problems here and there, but, but you know, I'm not that bad. And, and one of the things that we've done is we've lessened the, the, the vileness of sin. Right. 
We, we live in a day when, when sin is looked at as being good. We live in a day when evil is called good and good is called evil, when light is called darkness and darkness is called light. We live in a world that is upside down. You know, the apostles were accused of turning the world upside down. Well, guess what? The world has turned it back. But you know, when we truly see our sin as sin, then we'll understand the goodness of God. Psalm Romans chapter 7, verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Again, we see ourselves as being too good. Romans 5, verse 6, it says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. Problem is that we often are too rich in self. Mm -hmm. We are too proud of self. We are too full of self to understand and see just how good God is. You know, let me tell you what might just transform your life and your vision of God and his goodness might just be a trip to the whole block. You know, when you, when you see somebody that's gotten away from the Lord, you see somebody that, 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 that has, has gone so far and they've ended up in, in the hog lot like the prodigal son. You know, it might just pay for us to go to the alleys and the street corners in the midst of the night and see those who have lost everything and those who have experienced the hog lot. Mm -hmm. I remember in the jail in Wilmington, North Carolina, uh, speaking to an inmate and and he, was, he had been in prison before and, and not sure all the crimes in prison, but he got out of prison and was in, in New Hanover County and he kidnapped a fella, uh, had a fella take his vehicle, and I think it was two people, and he kidnapped them and drove them into Brunswick County and in Brunswick County took them to Green Swamp and killed them. He got picked up and, and he was in, in New Hanover County. He went to court uh, for kidnapping, was found guilty, and I believe was given a life sentence. But then he was transferred to Brunswick County to face murder charges. But as he was in New Hanover County, we were talking to him and he made this statement. He said, it's too late for me. Tell the others in here to listen before it's too late for them. He was sent to Brunswick County and was getting ready to face murder charges, getting ready to face his sentencing. And they went into the jail and he hung himself. Now understand, but for the grace of God, there go I. I mean, if we got everything we deserved, I mean, you know, how many times have we done things and never got caught? How many times have we been guilty of, of getting away from the Lord and, and yet the Lord didn't put us in the hog lot? Mm -hmm. now understand the Bible says the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Mm -hmm. But understand what we need to realize is the forgiveness of God, the fact that he is forgiving is because God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Amen. And then let me say the goodness of God is what keeps the servant of God going when everything and everyone else is trying to get him to quit. The world doesn't want you to be a good Christian. The world does not want you to serve God. Matter of fact, you may have family member that doesn't want you to serve God. Amen. The Bible says in Psalms 27 verse 13, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. You know what he said? He said, you know, I, I would have quit. Now understand, what's David talking about? Well, he could have been talking about when he fled from King Saul. Mm -hmm. Could have been talking about when he fled from Absalom. But what he said, he said, you know what? I would have quit if I had not believed that I will see the goodness of God in my lifetime. Right. You know, if there's one lesson that the Lord has been teaching me over all the years of ministry, is that God is good, especially when I can't see it currently. Right. Uh, many, many times, the circumstances say otherwise. 
Many, many times you look and, and the problems in life and the pressures in life, the pressures of the ministry get great and the expectations become bleak and the prognosis is not good. And, and, but you know what? I know that I shall see the goodness of God. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, maybe not this week. Maybe not next week, but you know what? Eventually, I'm going to see the goodness of God. Right. Understand, the goodness of God is for today, not just tomorrow. Sometimes the goodness of God is not in my circumstances. It's the fact that God is good, and the goodness for today is Him. Amen. Not what I'm going through. Not through the difficulties. One of the things that was said yesterday at, at Brother Dorn's Beer's funeral is, is you know, we, we don't know why God does what he does. But we know that he's good and we know that he does it for a reason and it's for the best. But, you know, we, we look at it and, and, and sometimes all we've got to look at, we say, I don't understand how goodness could come out of this. You know, how goodness can come out of, out of uh, somebody being taken out at 56 years of age. A preacher. Mm -hmm. But you know, in a situation like this, the only thing you can do is look at the fact that God is good, and because God is good, today is good. Mm -hmm. Because goodness is in Him. <coughs> you know, if, if the goodness of God is not, then we're all miserable. You know, if that were not the case, then we would not see the smiling faces of the missionary uh, presentations from the mission fields of the world. And just look into the eyes of those who have nothing. I mean, you, they go over to places where, where you know, they, they, they go and they go through the dumps trying to find something that they can turn around and sell. They go in and take somebody else's trash and they, they, they repurpose it and, and then they turn around and sell it just to make a, something to get maybe a meal for the day. But you look at them and, and, and their life is a mess and, and their, their society is a mess and they don't have anything. But along comes a servant of God, along comes a missionary that has a burden for them and he comes in and he teaches them about the God of salvation. He teaches them about Jesus dying on the cross and God saves them and God changes their heart gives them a heart of flesh and you look at them and you see a big smile on their face. Now understand, they're still living in poverty. Mm -hmm. they're still living in poverty but understand the goodness of God keeps the servant of God knowing or going when everything else is against them what do they have they have him they have him now let me say those are truly blessed who find their satisfaction in the goodness of God as long as he is good life is good. As long as he is good, then I'm good. Jeremiah 31 verse 14, and I will satiate the soul of the priest with fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, saith the Lord. Let me ask you, if the only thing you have, the only good you have in life is the goodness of God, is that enough? Is that enough? Psalm 65, verse 4, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even thy holy temple. Listen, are you satisfied? Do you find your satisfaction in the goodness of your relationship with God? Because understand, we are the temple. Mm -hmm. The Lord dwells in us. Yeah. Uh, the Holy Spirit is ours. And, and blessed is a man that whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. The goodness of God. You know, we're more like Ebenezer Scrooge than like Jesus. I mean, you know, the Bible says Matthew 6, verse 25, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life with what you shall eat, or what you shall drink, 
nor yet for your body what you shall put on is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. I mean, understand, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. But what we do is we determine the goodness of God based on our raiment, based on our food, based on our home, based on how good my day is, based on whether we feel good or not, based on my circumstances, whether they're, they're good or not. But the truth is, God wants us to experience his goodness. The demonstration of God's goodness, even in the tough times, God is good. And then we find the delivery of God's goodness. It begins with repentance. Let me tell you where the goodness of God begins. Just the fact that you're saved. Amen. The fact that God touches your heart. Romans chapter 2, verse 1, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whomsoever thou art, or whosoever thou art, that judges. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doeth the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them, uh, against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and doest the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? God introduced me to his goodness the day that he convicted my heart and showed me my need of a Savior. God's goodness is first delivered on the cross of Calvary. God's goodness is delivered us through salvation. God's goodness is delivered us through the call to repentance. I mean, you want to see the goodness of God uh, when, when the evangelist came. I believe it was Bruce Foster. When he came during the invitation and said, I see you raised your hand that you're unsaved. No, I got saved when I was young. That's the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. The goodness of God is seen in every message that I heard about salvation. The goodness of God is in every invitation where I held onto the back of the pew and said, if they sing one more verse, uh, I'll go forward. And then they'd sing another verse. I'd say, well, if they sing one more verse, I'll go forward. And then I'd outlast the verses. Or I should say, as I heard Patrick, they're not verses, they're stanzas. <laughs> he learned that music class. I, I outlasted one stanza, then another stanza, and another stanza. But you know where the goodness of God is? He didn't leave me alone. That night he touched my heart. And the next night he touched my heart. And I don't know how many times I prayed prayers. Lord, if I want saved before, save me now. If I want saved before, save me now. I mean, I understand every time he told me I wasn't saved. That's goodness of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then August the 7th, 1974, down at the Bill Rice Ranch, about 11 o'clock at night, laying in my bunk in the cabin. God touched my heart another time. The goodness of God. That night I got saved, the goodness of God. The next night I surrendered to the Lord, whatever you want me to do, that's the goodness of God. If you are saved, you've already experienced the goodness of God. It began the moment that God started working on your heart. And you know what? God may have started working on your heart years before you got saved. Amen. I mean, sometimes a man will make a decision that will ruin their life. I remember talking to people down in the jail and they said the best thing that ever happened to them was going to jail because God put them in a place where they had to listen to the word of God. And they made the statement, if I had never been in jail, I never would have gotten saved. The goodness of God. Whatever God has to do to get you to repent, the goodness of God leads you to repentance. Chastisement, the goodness of God. The hog lot, the goodness of God. A captivity, the goodness of God. Understand, it begins with repentance. You want to see the goodness of God? Get right with God. And let me say, it comes with God. Galatians 5, verse 22, we spent a long time talking about the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. The goodness of God is brought into our life through the Holy Spirit. It's His fruit. 
Ephesians 5 verse 9, <clears throat> for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. The goodness of God is not something we pick up like we do groceries. The goodness of God is what he places within us as we surrender to him. Mm -hmm. It's there. It's called a relationship. Then let me say it pleases God greatly to be good to his children. 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 11, Wherefore, I also, or wherefore also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith and power. Listen, it's a good pleasure to God to share his goodness to us. I like to do good things for my children. Um, I like to do good things for my grandchildren. The other day, I, you know, we, we'd been out and, and, and uh, you know, came back and it was getting sort of late in the day. And, and, and I thought, you know what? I think I'm going to take the grandkids to Dairy Queen. Now, did they need it? No. I took them to Dairy Queen because I wanted something to eat. <laughs> I mentioned that brother, uh, at brother Virgil's funeral. He said, I found out he liked Wendy's Frosties. He liked Krispy Kreme donuts. He liked cheesecake. Had all these things that he liked. And you know what? That made me happy because I could buy him those things and get one for me too. Mm -hmm. I bought him a, a cheesecake that cut into 12 pieces, three different kinds of cheesecake cut into 12 pieces. Took it to him and they were all in bed. And so I thought, well, I'll bring it back later. I brought it back to the church and stuck it in the refrigerator. Later never came. A little bit later that day, one piece disappeared. Later on, another piece disappeared. Twelve days later, well, you know, they'll need, you know, the cake's getting old, they need another one. Took them to Dairy Queen, got them each a blizzard. You know why? I enjoy doing good things for my kids. I enjoy doing good things for my grandchildren. Um... I enjoyed doing good things for the Dornbeer family yesterday. Now, if me being evil know how to give good gifts to my children, how much more does God love to do good things for us? It is the good pleasure of God to share his goodness with us. It is found in the work in which he has begun and will continue in us. It is found in the finished work in heaven. God looks down and he says, you know what? I, I, I'm going to work on him a little bit. I'm going to knock off a couple of rough edges. Mm -hmm. and, and he does. And, and you know what? We become the better. And he looks at it and he says, you know, that's pretty good. But you know, there's a little bit of something over here. And I, I'm going to work on that a little bit. Why? Because it pleases God greatly to make us better. It pleases God greatly to help us grow. Listen, as God is good to us, we in turn can bring that goodness to others. Amen. I mean, do you know why our country was blessed? Because of the goodness of God on the people of God. Amen. The Bible says in Numbers 10, verse 32, it says, and it shall be, if thou go with us, this is Moses talking to his father-in-law. It says, if you go with us, it shall be that what goodness the Lord shall do unto us, the same will we do unto thee. <clears throat> Listen, what we have to offer is not what we are, but what he is to us. See, our big problem is we're too busy showing others how good we are, not how good God is. Right. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And, and as God is good to me, I can turn around and bring that goodness into my relationship with the neighbors. Mm -hmm. I can bring that goodness into the relationship with my enemies. I can bring that goodness into my relationship with the people of God. 
I mean, one of the things that Paul said is, you know, the troubles that we went through is so that we could experience the comfort of God and then turn around and give that comfort to those that need it. And so Paul experienced the goodness of God here so he could take and, and share the goodness of God with this person over here who in turn would take it and share it with somebody else, who would take it in turn share it with somebody else, and then that person somewhere along the line, somewhere down the line, is going to be taking that same goodness and sharing it with Paul again. Amen. It makes a full circle. And so God shows us his goodness so that we can turn around and share it with others. Brother Ira talked about handing out tracts today in Sunday school. Right. Now understand, he talked about uh, the, the uh, fellow, I can't remember the name. He'll tell you what it is. My memory's about yay long. But, but uh, you know, one of the best tract distributors in, in the history of the church. Uh, he was won by a tract. Mm -hmm. Somebody gave him the gospel in printed form. And then he in turn gave it to somebody else who in turn gave it to somebody else who in turn gave it to somebody else. God is good to us so that we can turn around and be good to others. And then let me say the goodness of God became, becomes a part of our testimony. It's who we are. Exodus 18 verse 9. And Jethro rejoiced for all the goodness which the Lord had done to Israel whom he had delivered out of the hand of the Egyptians. Uh, Psalms 126, verse 2 and 3. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Listen, my life ought to be an example of the goodness of God. Amen. People ought to say, God has been good to him. One of the things that was mentioned yesterday at the meal uh, by one of the family members is some of the family members are unsaved. Some of them don't believe. But one of the things they saw is they saw the goodness of God to his people towards them. Yeah. They looked and saw the testimony of Brother Dornbeer. I am pastor in a small church out in the country. I mean, a church about like ours. Uh, and yet, they saw the impact that God had through his life. What a testimony. Let me say, my God is good to me. We end the message now with the declaration of the goodness of God. We began it with the declaration. Let's end it. The declaration of God. Exodus 34, verse 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and abundant. That means overflowing in goodness and truth. His declaration. The declaration of his children, Zechariah 9, verse 17, for how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty. The declaration of the goodness of God in song. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Listen, if you're here today and you are unsaved, and let me give you the introduction to God's goodness. 1 John 4, verse 9, And this was manifest, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him, here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. God is good to you, for God loves you first. He doesn't love you because you loved him first. Right. He loved you because you were his enemy. Mm -hmm. He loved you because you were a sinner. God is good to you in that he loves you in spite of what and who you are. Right. Romans 5, 6, For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. He died for his enemies. God is good to you in the salvation he offers you. 
will find no lack, no shortfall, and no shame. Listen, you get saved, you're saved for keeps. Amen. If you're not going to get saved and find out it didn't work. If you're not going to trust him and find out, no, he didn't save you. Romans 10, verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. What that means is this, if you will trust him, it will work. Amen. You'll never find anybody that will trust God where it didn't work. It will work. If you're here today and you are saved but backslidden, or you are saved and are going through troubles in your life, then let me remind you of the goodness of God. Luke 15, verse 20, And he arose and came to his father. When he was yet a great way off, his father saw him, and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck, and kissed him. The son said unto the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and in thy sight am no more worthy to be called thy son. Maybe you've done so much that you aren't worthy to be called the son of God. You look at it and say, how can God forgive me? Look what I did. Look how I, I, I shamed him. Mm -hmm. But the father said unto his servants, bring forth this the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. And they began to be merry. 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's not the goodness of God for you. If you're away from God, you're backslidden on God, you're going through troubles in your life, again, the goodness of God. Mm -hmm. If you're here today and you're running from God, let me deliver the message of God's goodness to you. Hebrews 12, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Listen, there's nothing more loving than a father reaching down to correct a wayward son, even though the son gets angry at the father. It's a loving father that keeps his son from getting worse. Right. It's a loving parent that reaches down when their child is misbehaving and, and, and disciplines them to teach them to not do that. Love is seen of a father with a broken heart, moves with love and compassion to turn his children so as to save him from himself, even though the father knows that to do so will incur the wrath of the son. Still do it faithful are the wounds of a friend. The Lord loves his children too much to allow them to ever get so far from him that he kicks them out of his family. You may get so far that the Lord says, you know what, I can't leave you down there anymore. There's nothing down there that's going to turn you around, so let me bring you home. I'll have to deal with you here. So let me say at the end, no matter how, what the situation will always end in goodness for those who are God. <laughs> say, preacher, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't. But God does. Romans 8, verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit makes the intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh the intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now, before we need to read the next verse, which is a very familiar verse, let me say, sometimes you don't know why you're going through the situations you are. Right. The Lord makes intercession for us. Uh, he helps our infirmities because we don't know how to pray. We don't, you know, sometimes we're praying to get out of a situation. We don't need to be out of it. No. So the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings which cannot be uttered because we don't know what to say. He searches the heart. He knows the mind of the Spirit. He knows the mind of God. And then it says, and we know that all things work together for good. What's he talking about? The intercession of the Holy Spirit as he prays and he takes our case to God. We know that in the end it works together for good to them that love God, them who are the called according to his purpose. The intercession of the Spirit always ends with his goodness. God is working toward your goodness. 
Just keep loving and trusting him. Now listen, I cannot in word begin to present the clear view of the goodness of God. I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But you know what? If you'll just keep trusting him, God will show it to you. He'll bring it to you. God can give you that true picture. It's founded in a relationship with him. I can't take my relationship and make it yours. Yeah. I see God based on my relationship with him. But I can guarantee you this, if you will start a relationship with him and you will continue in a relationship with him, then every day God is going to show you his goodness. And if you can't see it today, just rest in the fact that God is good all the time. Amen. And my only goodness today may not be a relief from my problems, uh, from my pain. The only goodness I may have today is his goodness. He is good. And I am his. It begins now. It continues now. And for now, it's all you have. Let me say, do not judge him based on the now. For now is only the next step to the tomorrow of eternity. Get that. Don't judge, don't, don't base, judge him based on now. Because now is only the next step you're taking for eternity. Amen. If you get to heaven and God is not good, then complain. If you get to heaven and, and, and it's not what God said, then turn on him. Look and say, well, God's not good. But that's not going to happen. The goodness of God. Oh, that men would praise him for his goodness. Mm -hmm. Oh, that men would praise him for his goodness. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. For those that are not saved listening to this message, be it here, on Facebook, or eventually on YouTube. If you're not saved, the goodness of God begins with this message to you. It begins with the message that God wants to save you. His desire is to save your soul from sin. People want to be saved from hell. God wants to save you from sin. All you got to do is call on him. Come realizing you are a sinner. You are vile. You are on your way to hell. That's what you deserve. But Jesus paid your penalty so he can offer you heaven. This is a record that God hath given us eternal life. This life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And so right now you can call out to him. Admit to him you're a sinner because you are. Admit to him that you're vile and you are deserving of hell. And you are. But Jesus died for you to make it possible for you to go to heaven. He paid your penalty. And if you will trust him and what he did, he will save your soul. I just called out to the Lord and said, Lord, I am lost. I am on my way to hell. I need you to save me. And God saved me that night. If you're away from God, it's time to get right with God. There's no reason why anybody ought to leave this place or leave this message not right with God. You can get right with God right now. Why? Because God is good. He is good. Dear Lord, we ask that you bless us now in this invitation time. Lord, help us to see your goodness. Help it to be our testimony. And Lord, when the life is not good to us, and Lord, the only goodness we have is you. And Lord, let that be enough. Lord, bless us now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand, heads bowed, eyes closed as the pianist plays. For how great is his goodness. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness for his wonderful works to the children of men.
Zechariah 9 verse 17 for how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty corn shall make the young men cheerful and new wine the maids God took a sinful people and brought them back people in captivity who lost everything for 70 years they were under Babylonian captivity they hung their harps on the willow trees and said how did they, they that took us captive require of us a song how can we sing the Lord's song in the land of captivity Seventy years God chastened his people. And then he brought them back. The Lord their God shall save them in that day as a flock of his people. For they shall be this as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land. He brought them back. For how great is his goodness. God wants you back. Lord, I need to be reminded often of your goodness. Lord, even though we don't see a lot of goodness around us, Lord, we know that you crown our year with goodness. Lord, we know that you are good. Lord, we know that as you lead in our life, Lord, that it always ends with the goodness of God. Now, Lord, bless us as we go. Help us to take the message with us and share it with somebody else so that they in turn can share it with somebody else. Don't let this message die here in the pew. Lord, let it live through your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're dismissed.